Hi friends. Welcome back to Julia at home. I'm Julia. I've got the toddler here with me today. You might see her crazy hair. You want to come say hi? I just washed yogurt out of it, so it's a little crazy right now, huh? Yeah. Um, today's video, I want to talk to you about science, give you an update on what we've been doing and how I'm adjusting a little bit. Um, so to, <laughs> as an introduction a little bit here, I have a second grader, a kindergartner, and then this one's one and a half. Science is really aimed towards my second grader, although I want my kindergartner to be able to participate. So in the past, what I've done before this year for my oldest kindergarten and first grade year is I did units. And I will link a playlist of my science units below. I love doing the science units. I'm inspired by Charlotte Mason, so we do nature journaling as well. Um, and with the units, I really try to incorporate a lot of living books and some art and some experiments sometimes. Um, but really like hands-on observation and learning and really kind of deep diving into the topic um, is what I prefer. This year, for her second grade year, I decided to try something a little new because she's really interested in animals in particular and thinking of maybe becoming a vet one day. And so I wanted to do some biology or life curriculum. Baby just ran over there. Okay. And so um, I gave her a couple options and we decided to go with um, Real Science Odyssey Life. Um, this is their level one. So it's aimed at first graders. So it's perfect age for me to do with my second grader in kindergarten. Um, and so we started the year just using this. It's, it's, I, I still like it and I would recommend it if you want to do a science curriculum with your elementary school kids. They have, um, I think for the next levels like astronomy and earth science and um, they also have physics and they have chemistry. So you could, if you're doing especially the classical model, go through all four and then repeat them in middle school and high school and so on. And that's what I originally thought I might do, but I'm, <laughs> I'm learning that I may not. <laughs> so here's what I ran into this past fall when we were doing this. This book, and I actually have it split into two. This took a lot of time and I actually don't recommend it, but I have like kind of my, um, this is the cover that comes with it. I got the digital copy and I, and I printed and bound myself. This is my book. And this just basically has a lot of the directions for the different labs in it. And then I bound separately um, a book for my daughter. I, I had her color. She chose a coloring page to color in. And I did the, um, each lesson kind of has two parts to it. So let's see if I can find a good example here at the beginning. It has kind of an introductory um, page and it's designed so that like, I think my daughter could read this herself now. I don't think she could have last year. Um, but I still, I read it to my kids. Um, I don't, I don't need her to be reading that. Um, I mean, if she really wanted to, she could. I don't have anything against it, but um, that's not the purpose of doing this. We get a lot of other reading. And then there's there's lab sheets um, for the labs. So I have the instructions for the labs and she has the sheets that she would fill in. And um, I also added in some extra things in here. Like I, I put in a um, black piece of paper for her to glue the skeleton on. And for my son, I didn't make a full book but I just printed out some of the pages for him and I keep them in here um, separately because I like the things with a lot of writing, I didn't include for him for the most part. Um, but I, he did get that skeleton page and stuff. It's just separately and not in a bound book. So that's what we've been doing. And, and the goal was that each week we would do either one or two of the labs. It depends. Some of them kind of go together. I believe there were two for the circulatory system and such. Um, but I was feeling, one, the labs, labs are a lot of work. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> as a busy homeschooling mom, it's not my favorite thing to do. I will spend so much time doing like art and like fun projects for history, but for some reason, science labs are not my thing. Um, but I do think it's good to get some in anyway, so I make myself do them, <laughs> but it's very lab heavy. So like each section is basically just that short introduction and then labs and I found myself feeling like I wanted more information um, both for myself and the kids and that I just I, I we were I felt like we were rushing through it because each you know we're circulatory system and like everything's very surface like on on the surface because you're moving through it all so quickly I should just say it goes through like the cell and the cells and such and then it goes through the human body and then it's going to go through like the animals um based on 
like animal classification. So because it felt like it was a little bit too much on the surface for me, um, I started adding in, like just pulling out some of the body books that we already had. Um, I have several um, like Usborne Sea Inside books and things like that. Um, I think we have like a magic school bus book on inside the human body, things like that. And um, reading those, looking through those, and then I'd have them draw what we talked about that day as well in their nature journals. So for example, this is, um, it's actually two pages here, I think, for the circulatory system that my daughter drew. And I helped her label. Um, she also wrote a lot of me's on there. Those are all her. Um, <laughs> But so we wanted like blue is carbon dioxide, red is oxygen. These are her lungs. Um, actually, I think this is circulatory and this is respiratory. Um, they go together. So um, I had them start doing that just to show you my son. This was him drawing a white blood cell and a red blood cell <laughs> there. Um, and I, I think that was a good addition and adding the books were a good addition. But then if we're doing the introduction in reading, the labs, sometimes two in a week, and the nature journal it's just it's a lot at once for science and it's at this age more than i want to be doing um all at once and it, it still felt like we were rushing through it right so i stopped um for pregnancy sickness and if you want to know more um i'll link a video here you can figure out what's going on with that and then when we came back in january i mentioned this in um in that video as well i think my homeschool update video um we are just taking some time to finish up the human body. We really only had like one week left with two related labs um, on the human body, but I decided that I just wanted to kind of round it out a little bit. So um, I got a couple more books, not many. So we read the books, we did a little bit more journaling and some other activities that I had, uh, mainly just I had like the organ tubes that I had them match to cards and then label on <laughs> what organ was which. Um, and then we're doing a, a kind of a mini germ unit to finish it off with some experiments, um, that are separate from the book that I just wanted to do also for our health, um, because we are required to teach health for the state. Um, so that's how we're wrapping up human body. And then going forward, the main difference I'm doing is I am slowing down. Um, I'm going to treat each of these sections kind of as a mini unit. So we're going to be moving into the six kingdoms of living things and um, going through animals basically. And then at the end, there's a couple, I think there's like three or four um, lessons on plants. And um, so what I'm doing in addition to slowing down is I'm still going to be following the curriculum, but I'm just also going to include more books. The first thing I'm including is, I've had this one for a while, the Kingfisher Animal Encyclopedia. So we're gonna read whatever's corresponding to the section there. So for example, like it starts off with um, uh, six kingdoms of living things and classifying critters. And so we'll talk about the kingdoms and what that is and everything, and just spend more time on that. And then um, it goes into, is it Nidaria? It starts with a C. Um, I'll put it here. I, it's, 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 so that's like the first category that this book goes into. Then it goes to worms, mollusks, echinoderms. So I'm going to be taking each of those and probably seeing if I, if I have, hopefully I have books for most things, um, things I don't, um, we'll use either way. We will use this for all of them. And if I don't have extra books, I might purchase some where we might just see if we can find a video online or something just to round it out a little bit more. And then um, I will be still doing most of the um, labs that are in the book. There's a few that we may not get to just because they require animals. <laughs> and especially right now, like we're in the dead of winter, so it's just really not good timing for it. On the other hand, I'm thinking this is probably going to go farther into the spring and summer. We'll probably continue with this when we've kind of tapered off and finished some of our other subjects because it's heavy into the gardening year. Because to be honest, science, like especially this kind of science where we're talking about life and animals, is much easier to do for us in the spring, summer, and fall when there's all the signs of animals and life outside. We can just do more then. Um, 
but because we're going to go so slowly, I'm also not counting on finishing it this year. So we'll probably just continue next year where we leave off. And then I think what I'm going to do is um, go back to more of a unit type study. Um, we've talked about doing some astronomy and I have some books for that already. And I may end up actually purchasing their astronomy and maybe earth science curriculum to use for labs and also for structure. But again, do it my own way. One of my favorite quotes, and I'm pretty sure it was Julie Bogart, is to use the curriculum, don't yet let the curriculum use you. And I take that very seriously. For some reason, um, most curriculums that I get, I do have to adjust. Um, some of you might not have that issue, might be able to just use them as they are, but for me, that just... Oh, hi. Yeah. Oh, are you giving the baby a bottle? Very nice. <laughs> for me, that's just how it is, I guess. And um, I should do what makes me happy as well um, and works best for me because if I have more of that enthusiasm, I feel like it's going to go better for everybody. Um, we will learn more. We will all enjoy more. So going forward, adding more books, adding more journaling to go along with it. I might even add in some art depending if I see something that like is connected to it and we're slowing down. And uh, that's my homeschool science update. I hope, <laughs> I hope that made sense. If you have questions, please ask me below. Um, it is, it is late. The kids are around. Dinner's in the oven and I'm a little rambly. So <laughs> I'm sure other homeschool moms can, well, I'm sure other parents in general uh, can empathize right now. So that's my science update. I will do my best to um, make some more videos showing you how we're doing as we go along this spring. Let me know if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have science that you love right now or if it's something you're struggling with. And I will talk to you later, friends.